Welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, and I suspect an edition that's as far from yesterday's as it's possible to get. Um, so thank you very much to anyone who watched yesterday's video. The extraordinary, extraordinary puzzle, this one, Ren Ren Ban Ban by Darth Paradox. It took me something like two hours, 15 minutes to crack it. An extraordinary, extraordinary puzzle, a fa fantastic thing, uh, actually, fantastic uh, sense of euphoria I got from finishing it in the end um, and yeah do do check that out we called the video something like um, the puzzle only one person has solved because only one it ha only had one solve on Logic Masters Germany um, now this this video may may have a different name uh, this is called walk in the mist and it's by directionary and this is well it's 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 probably my favorite as you know <laughs> directionary knows the way to my heart which is to fill the grid with fog this is a fog of war puzzle which means that we if if we if we get the correct digits um we clear the fog and we're not allowed to guess so don't cheat when you do this um but this puzzle is unusual because it has over 350 solves on logic masters germany and yet has maintained something like a 92, 93% beauty rating, which means that of all those people who had a go at it, they've all basically loved it. Um, and that is incredibly hard to do. As you can imagine, the more people that solve the puzzle, normally you get one or two people who go, no, nah, I didn't like it, and they'll give it a bad rating and knock it down. Well, Directionary has, has, has managed to avoid that with this one. Um, and this is what we're going to have a go at. I believe this is genuinely approachable as well. Um, so not only has it had a lot of solvers, but it really is quite solvable. Uh, in fact, I reached out to Sven um, earlier, the programmer we work with, uh, and I said, well, if this puzzle's going to get a lot of solves, could we have some sort of live count going on of how many of how many solves it had had? So if I call the video, this 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 puzzle has been solved 360 times and then we can prove that actually it's been solved 10,000 times. We could keep increasing the number on the video title. Um, and I got that idea from a, a Tom Scott video I saw ages ago. I don't know, I, I know many of you know Tom Scott is a much bigger YouTuber than we are. Um, but he had this video that was called, this video has 64,468,547 views. I've no idea really how he did, he did this. It's some programming wizardry. Uh, you can see it just says 64 million, but I believe if you actually investigated, you would find that this is basically the correct number of views. Um, so uh, I said to Sven, could we do this with puzzles? I think Sven is thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know what that will mean, but wouldn't it be cool if we could keep a live count of how many times Walk in the Mist has been solved? That would, that would tickle me pink. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about? Oh, I will just mention actually, apparently in the list of puzzles that have achieved this sort of accolade of more than 350 solves and still maintained an enormous approval rating, there is another puzzle, which is this one, Arithmetic Quiz. Uh, and this is the puzzle that when people ask me, can I give my kids um, any cracking the cryptic puzzles to have a go at? Will they be able to do it? I normally point them in the direction of this one because if you understand sort of multiplication and division, this is solvable and it's just such a beautiful setup, isn't it? Um, so I'll, I'll try and remember to put a link to that, that puzzle under this video as well. Um, now, what else do I want to talk about? I'm going to do a couple of birthdays. Firstly, I have to apologize to Kevin, who turned 52 yesterday from Gun Barrel City in Texas. Now, I didn't believe there could possibly be a, be, be a place called Gun Barrel City, so I looked it up on the internet. There is indeed a population of about 6,000 people. And Kevin, I understand that I think it was your brother who was making you homemade pizza and red velvet cake uh, for yesterday's celebration. I, so I don't... I, I, well, I hope you've had a brilliant day and I don't need to recommend chocolate cake. I am a fan of red velvet cake. It does have a lot of icing. Um, and then the other birthday I'd like to, I'd like to announce today is, is cool, is Keith, who has turned 75 today. So happy birthday, Keith. And Keith has watched every single video that we have released since February 2020. Now, given we have not missed a day since then, 
uh, when we've made two videos a day and obviously Mark's Wordle videos come out every day so Wordle shorts sometimes we do bonus crossword videos that is a lot of content that you've watched Keith and we're we've well we're fantastically delighted about that thank you for watching um, but also oh well it's just brilliant it's brilliant that we can entertain any one person that much so Keith thank you very much and I hope that you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today having reached the magnificent 75 years old, the secret plus 30. Uh, any other news? Not really. Um, we've got a crossword video, actually a bonus crossword video today. Uh, we're continuing this series we're making of um, where either Mark or I solves the Friday Times crossword. That's the London Times. Someone said it was the New York Times cryptic crossword. No, no, it's the London Times, the proper one. Um, so we do that every Friday for those of you who enjoy our cryptic crossword content. And then over on Patreon, of course, we've got Demono's Sudoku Hunt slash novella, which is, uh, has been amusing people mightily. Um, someone described it as the Dan Brown of, of Sudoku Hunts. I'm not sure if that... It was meant as a compliment. That's all I can tell you. Um, anyway, let's have a look at Walk in the Mist by Directionary. And these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Fog is covering the grid. Your task is to remove the fog by placing correct digits in the grid. No guessing is required. So yeah, do not go to, go to as somebody did a few weeks ago. They went in the fog and they typed in all the numbers one to nine. And if you do that, it will reveal, when you get the correct number, it will reveal all of these cells. That is cheating. The idea is to look at the cells where you've got white, where you can see through the fog, deduce what numbers you should be able to put in and then the fog will cl clear gradually as directionary intended. Digits along a grey arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. Uh, okay, so we have got a complete arrow here. So imagine this was, I don't know, four and five. I, I'm not going to put those in because if I, oh, I could put them in in small letters. I'll put them in like this because four plus five equals nine. So that would be a legitimate way um, to fill this arrow. If I put them in in large numbers and they happen to be correct, it would clear the fog, which I'm, I'm not justified in doing. Um, along blue thermometers, okay, so this looks like the tip of a blue thermometer. Digits must increase from the bulb end. Okay, so that means let's imagine that there was a thermometer. I can't really draw one, but if this was a thermometer, but let's make it like that. Um, then, and this was the bulb. I can even sim sort of s simulate that like this. Uh, so let's say that this is the thermometer. Then the way that the thermometer needs to work is this needs to be the lowest digit. So as mercury would rise along a thermometer, the digits must rise as we move along from the, from the bulb end. So the bulb contains the coldest digit is one way to think about um, thermometers. What else have we got? Um, cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. We've got the, one of those poking out there. So if we worked out that this square was a 9, this square would have to be an 8 because it needs to be consecutive with 9. Cells separated by a black dot. Now I don't think we can see any of those, but if there are, if there are cells separated by a black dot, they contain digits in a ratio of 1 to 2, which means one of the cells will contain double the other one. Um, so imagine this was a this was a domino separated by a black dot and we worked out this square was a two. Then this square would either have to be four because four is double two or it could be one because two is double one. That's the way black dots work. Uh, not all dots are necessarily given. So it's absolutely fine to have two cells that can or a domino that contains consecutive digits without a white dot. Um, um, there doesn't have to be a white dot between, or a black dot between digits that have those particular formulations. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to take my walk in the mist. Uh, let's get cracking. Now, the great thing about Fog of War puzzles is there is only one place to start, and that's going to be in this box. So, unless, you, unless like Jade Eye, you provide a completely foggy grid. Um, well, okay, so we can see this arrow here is going into this cell. So it's at least a four cell arrow. 
Now these have to all be different digits. So the minimum these could be would be 1, 2, and 3. And the minimum this square could be would be 1. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 again is 7. So the minimum value of this is 7. So it's a 7, 8, or a 9. Now, the other thought I have about this, though, is, is it possible for all four of those digits to be different? Well, clearly it isn't, because the triangular number for four is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, and we can't write 10 into the circle. So, that, so within these four cells, and, and there could be... There could be another cell. I mean, imagine the arrow then went down here, for example. You could have a five-cell arrow. And then this would be one, two, three, and this would be a one, two pair, and that would add up to nine. But even if it's only a four cell arrow, it's not possible for these cells to be all, all different digits. So this digit must repeat within these three cells. And that means it must be these two cells must be the same. Those two must be the same digit. Now, how big can the repeated digit be? And I don't think it can be higher than three. Because if this was 4, 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2, which is the minimum, is again, that's 11, isn't it? But 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 is 9. So these two digits have to be from 1, 2, and 3. But, I see, I see what you've done here, Directionary. This cell is the tip of a thermometer. I don't know the length of it, but I can tell you it's not a very long thermometer now. Because, well... What do we know about the tip of a thermometer? It's got to contain the highest digit that appears on that thermometer. Well, the highest digit cannot be a 1. Um, so this square is either a 1 or a 2, depending on whether it's the... Well, depending on, amongst other things, whether it is the bulb of the thermo. So this digit is obviously, therefore, a 2 or a 3. Now, a 4... Well, now, if this was double 2, the minimum these could be would be a 1-3 pair, so we can't make this add up to 7 anymore. Um, okay. So, well, I know this is quite a high number as well. Oh, ah, no, got it. Right. Okay, lovely. Absolutely lovely. What I like about this is I think if you've never done Arrow Sudoku before or Fog of War puzzles before, you this might not be that obvious. And that's really rather cute. But look, those five cells. Now these five cells add up, well, once you've added this one as well, but these five cells add up to a minimum of the triangular number for five. They've all got to be different. Now the triangular number for five is 15, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Now that means that these two circles, which are the sum of at least those five digits plus this one, plus anywhere else that this arrow goes, these add up, these two circles add up to at least 15 there, plus at least two here. That's 17 already. Well, they can't add up to more than 17 because they can only be a maximum of an eight, nine pair. So they do add up to 17. And that means that this has to be a two and this arrow only goes to that spot and when we put two in here this is where it gets exciting <laughs> we get to reveal the fog now oh look okay so this was the bulb and it now can't be a two so that's a one um this is a two because it's the same digit in green these squares have got to be the other digits that make up the triangular number for five now so what have we got therefore from from this well now we know this digit actually using the white dotage because we need a digit that's consecutive with eight or nine well if this is a nine this would have to be an eight but it's going to clash with the eight we're going to then put there so this needs to be a seven and this is going to clear more folk <laughs> so this is an eight this is a nine these two squares add up to eight well they've got they can't be, okay, they've got to be 3 and 5, don't they? So they're not 1 and 4. So 1 and 4 live on this arrow. Let's check the mathematics here. Yeah, so we've got 1 plus 4, that's 5, plus double 2 is 9. Um, okay, and we've got, ooh, okay, and we've got the bones or the start, start of another arrow here, which goes at least to this square. 
and those three digits all need to be different because they're all in the same column of the Sudoku. And these two digits can't even be ones and twos. So the minimum value for those two squares is three plus four plus this digit, which could be a one. So this is an eight or a nine. Uh, and in fact, okay, we can we can do better than that because can you not put a three in this domino? And the answer to that is no. If, if there's no three on this arrow in these two squares, four plus five is the minimum. And then once you add in at least a one here, you're going to get to 10 again. So the three must go there and that's going to reveal some more fog. Um, right, so if this was, well, this, no, this has to be four, doesn't it? If this isn't four, it can't be five, so it would be then six, and that once we add this digit in, it's going to break. So this is four. Okay, and that completes this arrow. So this is a one or a two, depending on whether this is eight or nine. Ah, yeah, but look, look, look now. Now five in this box is on the dot, which means that we need a consecutive digit with five, which isn't four, so this is a five, six pair. And now, okay, sorry, and now where does eight go in the box? Well, it's got to go in the circle. So that's eight. This is one. Clearing away more fog. These two squares are seven and nine, I think. So we, we could do an absolute plethora of pencil marking over on the right-hand side. Well, especially here, where we need one, two, and six, I think. Um... And up here, we need six and, why can't, oh, we need a seven in this box. So that's seven. It's not going to clear fog because we've already, we've already done our fog clearance in this box. So that's a five, that clears some fog. That's a six, clears a little bit more fog. There's a dot here. Right. Well, this dot has to contain an eight. And the reason we know that, if, if we think of the nature of a, of a white dot, it's a consecutive pair of digits. So it's always going to include an even and an odd number. And the only even number I can include on the dot now is eight, which can't go with, can't go with nine. So that's seven, eight. This squares the balancing digit for the row, which is five, which, oh, look, which completely clears this, but we don't get any more clues. All right, and we need three, four, and nine at the top of the grid, which does look, this is an exciting square. There is the possibility for a three in the corner. Um, now, right, okay, so this is where we look next, look, because we're adding these two digits together, at least. The arrow could then turn, but I don't think it's going to, because the minimum value of these two digits is now 2 plus 3, because we can't put 1 into either of these squares. And the maximum value for this square is 5, so this is 5, <laughs> and this is 2 plus 3, and we know the order, so this is clearing fog as well. Now this square is at least four, look, and this is a four, five, six. Oh, no, right, this is huge. Okay, look at this thermometer, which goes at least to this square with a bulb that is at least equal to four. But look, if, if this was four, you can't put five into any of this sort of thermometer string because of this digit. So if this is four, which is the least it could be, this is six, seven, eight, nine. That's that's the only, well, we don't know whether this digit is four or five. That's what we don't know. But we know that because this digit is at least six, it must go six, seven, eight, nine. And this digit is four or five. And nine goes here by Sudoku and seven goes here by Sudoku. And nine goes in one of those two squares by Sudoku. And these squares are, is this a naked single? I believe it is. Look, it sees five, six, seven, eight, nine in the column, and it sees one, two, three in the row. So that's a four. This is a five. These two squares are two and three, which we can do, and, and it reveals some more fog. Um, right, maybe these cells now then, six, eight, and nine. Or maybe this column? One, oh yes, okay, look. One, two, and three. We've just got to be a bit careful here because this arrow is 
bending, which means those two digits could be the same number. So ordinarily, we, we would immediately write three in here on the basis that a two cell arrow couldn't add up to only two. But here, if that was double one, we could make this a two. So I think we can only get rid of the one in the circle. Let's check the rest of this then. We've got five, six and nine down here. And that means we must have four, seven and eight in this column. Right, now where do we look? That's going to be the next question. Five has to be in one of those squares. Ah, okay. Well, five cannot be here because this arrow only adds up to two or three. So that, ah, no, that didn't do it. This is a two cell arrow. So there is definitely a one in at least one of these positions and possibly both. Uh, this square has to be a one because otherwise it's a four. So that is a one. And then we get a dot over here, look. Although this dot feels a little bit harder to understand. Ah, okay, but now this is a one nine pair, which means these squares are four, six, and eight. So this square is a four, and that's going to reveal some more fog. Let's tidy up our pencil marks. This square here we, we now know is a seven, and that's on a dot. So this square here is six or eight. Um, and these squares here are two, three, and four. And this square here is one or two, depending on what this is. And all we've got to do now is to, not sure actually, this black dot is a bit restricted. Oh, it can't have three on it. I, I'd seen it couldn't have two on it. It actually can't have three on it either. Right, so this is a four, eight pair. Remember with a black dot, you're always looking for one of the digits to be double the other. So, I mean, the actual only Sudoku digits you can ever put on a black dot are in fact one, two, three, four, six, and eight. Five, seven, and nine don't work because think about five, it's either two and a half or 10 for the equivalent digits. Seven would be three and a half or 14, nine, four and a half or 18. So we're only able to choose from these, but two and three immediately come out here. And once two and three come out, that takes six out because six can only partner up with three and one out as well because one can only partner two. So we get left with a four, eight pair. All right, so this square becomes a seven. That is gonna clear some fog. Uh, let's see what that's doing. There's another black dot. Oh, look, well, okay, exactly what we've just been talking about. Look, this black dot here can't have five or nine on it. So it's got to be a six, three pair. That fixes this. So this is a double one pair, which means this is a one. Oh, that's very, it's very easy to, to miss that because you're not looking for double one pairs. Now we can do a little trick and get a one here. And that's because we can, well, no, it's simple actually. Look, we can just do this column. We don't need any trickery. It just is. That's two, that's three. Oh, look, we missed the possibility of a three in the corner down here. Look, this can't be four because What's consecutive with four? Well, it's three and five, and that can be neither of those. So we know the order. That's eight, that's four, that's eight, that's six. Um, that's four, that's one, that's one, that's nine. We need something consecutive with eight. So this is seven. Oh, there, ooh, okay, there's a seven, nine pair at the bottom of this column, which means this is a five, six pair, which we can do, but we don't get any more information about this cell. Um, oh, no, okay, look now, we've got an eight looking at this digit, so that becomes a six. So this is five or nine. We've got a black dot down here, which has got to have two or four on it because it can't have one on it or six. Hmm, can we do anything clever with that? Probably. Let me just take, that's not six. Let's have a quick think to ourselves, or maybe, maybe the white dot. I mean, if, ah, yeah, okay, that's lovely. That is lovely, yes. All right, let's go back to what we know about white dots. White dots always have an odd digit on them and they always have an even digit on them. 
Well, how could this be the odd digit on this white dot? It can't be 1, 3, it can't be 7 or 5, so it would have to be 9. But if it's 9, that has to be, uh, well, it's on a black dot, so it doesn't work. So this is not the odd digit, this is the odd digit, and it can't be 1, 3 or 5. So this is 7 or 9 which means that this is even and it can't be six because of the six here. So that becomes an eight. Oh, that finishes off the, the highlighting. Eight can only go with four on a black dot. That becomes a nine. Look, this becomes a... Uh, oh, look, yeah, look, look, no, look, look. <laughs> That's three in the corner. That's three in the spot. Light losing its religion. Um, all right. Okay. So now, now what's going on? Surely, surely we're nearly there now. Yeah. Look, the thermometer does it. This has got to be lower than four, and it can't be one or two. So that's going to be three, which means that's three. That's four. That's four. That's nine. Um, so this is five. This is nine. This is seven. This is seven, this is nine, this is eight, this is four, this is five by Sudoku, and now that's a nine, and this square here is a two of all things. So two, six, six, eight, eight, seven. What a beautiful puzzle that is. Oh, and I did it in no seconds, apparently. No seconds, because the clock never started. That seems to be my way at the moment. But that's beautiful, isn't it? It's just seriously fun, not too complicated, and a very nice break after yesterday. So, Directionary, thank you very much for that. I enjoyed that mightily. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. I hope you had a go at that one. That's definitely approachable. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.